So with one look arranged by Philip Cavern, we start with these hands posi hand positions and I will all um, mostly use the fingers that I see except for the moments where I feel like a different fingering seems to work better. So right away I see a couple of issues with the left hand which I need to sort out. One is I have to press the C sharp with finger one, let's say. Yeah, the alternative is to do it this way, right? Keep thumb tucked underneath and then use the long fingers to play these upper notes. But I'm not sure it's necessarily better, so let's go with what we see, which is one here. Well, it means two will be here, which means the previous one will be here, not here, right? So. There's the, this huge leap. I would practice that right away so that anything that really requires a lot of physical effort gets sorted out. Uh, one more time. And again, when I practice this leap, I make sure to land my thumb right here, not right here, right? So that my second measure I can play as easily as I can do the first. So one more time. Uh, fingers here, three, one, and I feel a lot of effort in my upper arm muscles to do that, and so I'm going to use that as a kind of physical exercise. There it is. So then, of course, the rest of it you kind of build into this moment. All right, maybe then go back to. I always stop to check that I landed correctly at that red squiggly highlight uh, yeah a little tricky but you get it so same thing i'm playing the right hand here with, with the thumb next to the black keys not here because i have to slide in anyway and it will create a stutter point So da 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 da. You don't want to sound like that. So instead, just start in the, in the inside the keyboard like this. Thumbs touching the black keys. Right, and that way it just flows very smoothly. I used to really believe in staying close to the edges of the keys as much as possible, and I think. I would still agree that that's generally a good idea, but the problem is we play so many black key uh, passages with the thumbs or the fifth fingers, which are short, that, you know, this in and out, in and out going on constantly is just not serving our positioning terribly well. So it unfortunately means you do have to get used to this idea of playing less optimally by playing inside the keys but then at least you can stay very composed when it comes to position changes right so one more time instant leap Instant leap. And notice the problem with my current positioning. Should be that, right? If I'm doing the same thing as in the first measure, I have to spread out my five fingers. So. Which means that maybe some kind of bracket reminder might be useful. You know, gra grab all those five notes. I'm just going to keep marking and jumping moments. Mm, so right here from the last jump. Okay, next line. 
well, what, what do we have to do? We have to do this. While the pedal is holding the G sharp, so maybe more like here, we're telling us that, right? And then we can continue. Even though this one I could probably play like this, right? Instead of being inside, I can be here with the left hand. But look at the next measure in this line. My thumb is back on the black keys, so might as well just stay here in this region. keeps it on the same rail track, so to speak, this white black rail. Uh, let's see. Same thing in the right hand. I wouldn't slide back out to the edge of the key because you can play like that also. No reason to. Just keep that thumb right next to those black keys and in the end, while somewhat uncomfortable, it solves so many position shifting problems. Let's see, so keep marking the leaps. Yep. Beginning of the line. So check, stop and check that you did the leap. make that extension so maybe this and instant All right so you're not waiting until the last moment and then oh I have to be here no it's more like that All right so if you are marking some kind of a position adjustment in the score you might do that right just thumb comes out Slight adjustment there for that yellow highlight, but another little adjustment, right? As I start the yellow highlight measures, bring the thumb in. Ah, here it's a bit of a leap because we want to put finger four on that E. I like that idea, I like that advanced preparation, so let's put that in. So here's that last pink leap. All right, slight extension in the left hand. Should feel uncomfortable. Okay, then what? Then another leap. So put that in and here as well by the way the reason I labeled this or highlighted this with yellow is because I want to bring attention later to this passage which uses the same exact melody plus some extra notes but the main fingering pattern still holds for those upper melody notes so I just wanted to make sure we are aware of it all right so last uh, pink jump highlight you have to practice so you have got this boom you have to do this okay and i think on this next line um, by the way you see the green highlight now because similarly later in the piece we will have the same exact two note harmonies in the left hand i would say one three is easier than one two and then place to play the 2-5 with what I suggest is a quick exchange with one so that then you can reach and stretch out while holding one while holding the E like that so one three now 
here, five and three was originally suggested. I think five and four is easier, so like this. Oh, that should be reaching out here. So a couple of position adjustments that are not leaps, but they are still important to, to master. So starting at, let's say this part right here, I need to be in this position, kind of slightly rolled over my, you can see my nose kind of guiding where the middle of my torso is. And that's, that's what I'm positioning myself to do. Before that, of course, I have four on D and that's the leaping moment. So I'm going to put that in just to be aware of that mo momentary shift. The D with a uh, pink highlight and then right before it is easy. And then coming up to the pink. Right. Okay. So that's why I think five and four is just a good idea on that measure. Let's get into it. Now change to five and four. And as you do it, while the pedal covers up the this position change, uh, you just leap. So another little moment that shows you have to do an adjustment. point out that this five has to stop so that you can make that extension in the right in the left hand and then So there were a couple of uh, problems in these two measures that I was trying to think through. And ultimately I came up with the idea that 1-5 just makes more logical sense, even though, yes, if you put that 2 that you see on the downbeat of the last measure, yeah, it kind of allows you to reach F-sharp with 1, but... What I'll leave this. This is one of those one or two. I'm not very strong-minded about which one is the better finger, but I can also see how that can work. We just keep one on that D and and then slide down. But okay, let's let's actually go with uh, two. So let's let's delete my idea of one. Right, in this last measure where I am right now, my thinking was maybe do 1-3 in the left hand and then a 3-5. A bit of a stretch, but it does eliminate the need to shift positions dramatically. Right, that was another idea I had that maybe stretch 1-3 and then 1-1 one, one in, the, in the right hand, but ultimately it's, it doesn't matter. But what I do think really helps is to avoid 5-5 five, five transition in the left hand. Just do that big extension. Before that measure we have... Just a couple of leaps that you need to really stop and master. I don't know, I don't need to look down at my hand because I think that feeling of this big gap with the side of my finger 5 allows me to know, yeah, that's definitely a C sharp right here. Because if I was doing that, let's say I missed, I would feel that C sharp right underneath my fifth finger and I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's, the wrong <laughs> that's the wrong part of the keyboard. If I went only to a sharp, same thing. I'm feeling that G sharp there. So I want to feel that big gap with my f five. All right, there it is, I'm, I'm free. 
but in the same time, that. So, big important leaps, I would practice the, the motion until it feels easy. back to leaps and uh, slight adjustment not much of a leap on in, in the left hand just a slight slight readjustment of the position all right last line let's see uh, I might find it difficult myself to find this grace note octave so probably a more natural solution for me would be to do one five and then a four. Do I see that? Instead of... But, you know, if your finger lengths allow you to do it, then that's fine. So again, all the same leaps as we had before. Let's just check. Yeah, same as measure five, six, seven. Oh, come on. And as you do that right hand, uh, why do I always say right hand? Left hand leap, slight right hand readjustment. Not dramatic, but like that, where you let your thumb slide down to G sharp. So basically, as you as you look through this tutorial, I would pause on every highlighted leap moment and just practice the motion. So I'm here on E, I'm here on C sharp, you know, I see those leaps and I have to do this. One more time, I'm here, and now I have to be here. It looks kind of a lot. Once you know what you're doing, it's easy, but at first it's not there then if you can master it then of course you can continue mm. right. L even little things like that why be stuck on the G sharp with finger one it's played its G sharp now move it to A and now that similar yellow situation is up there that's why I have the same fingers chosen. Oh, and same thing, a leap down, just like before. Spread out the fingers. And that means here you collect them with thumb going down to C sharp. have this reach with two and four over one and then you just let go of the four because the pedal is there oh I just realized that my pedal is not showing whoops let me see if I can fix that real quick I wonder why my piano is on because I'm in the wrong mode, I'm sorry. Give me just one second. There it is. All right, so back to uh, my tutorial. So you can see when the pedal engages, it becomes green. Um, yeah, so let's do this. Let's start from the beginning of the yellow highlight. Just make sure you have leapt correctly. I would pause here as I change the pedal just to make sure I've brought my fingers 4, 3, 2, 1 in place. So if I were to show this position, I would do that. You can see the 
left hand thumb wanting to pull in. One more time, just that last measure. Okay, so same thing. Pedal is down, we're just moving away, not holding any notes. Uh, let's see if I can keep going. Can I? Will this device comply? No. Hmm. Seems like I need to reset a little bit. Because that doesn't look right. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I've been having problems with iPad, the more scores I load in, the, the, the more sluggish it's becoming. All right, so top of this second page, and we have a very similar situation to what we saw on the first page with this green highlight showing the exact same left hand, which means one, three, one, two, and then two, five. By the way, notice that the fingers that you supplied already, five and four, is exactly what I recommended on the first page where it was five and three the first time. So for fingers consistency's sake, this is very good. Now I recommend that three, the red three you see, so it's easier to reach with the four. You know, so you're not leaping in the last moment. But a bit of a leap is necessary in the right hand. Why do I always say right? In the left hand, um, from that D. So let's practice that. All right, so as soon as I change my pedal, maybe I wait until F sharp that high, uh, three, red three F sharp in the right hand to fully clear my harmony. But as soon as I'm done, I just leap. And a big, big, big leap in the left hand. Got it right this time up to the end of this section, right? So that last measure of the first line is kind of the final measure of the phrase and we get into a new section after that. Huge leap. A lot of leaps. And a big stretch, just like in our intro where we had all five fingers engaged, same thing. I'm suggesting the 432 in this last measure in the left hand because of what's coming up. If you can do that transition, now you're set. You don't need to do anything. If you do it this way, then you still have to move and it just creates an, an extra leap that you need to take care of. So if you reach with four, then you're set. So that's the last measure. Practice the leap. Get all five fingers in place. And then the rest of it go for that four. So all together. I would call this a leap. Because even though you see a legato line, you have the pedal down. You're not going to do something like, right, kind of get your fourth over one and make a true legato connection. The pedal takes care of this. So all you have to do is get to that A and then just move, right, to start the next melody in the next line. Uh, before this uh, last measure, let's see, what do we need to do? second to last measure, middle of the 
line. Hmm. I'm using fourth here, that's the problem. One more time. So let's see that red, or uh, pink, I guess highlight and for the left hand just stop and make sure you you, you did it you, you managed the leap and then next leap right, so suddenly you have leap leap and that's important right. just freeze and check check your position uh, before that I think we I discussed everything that I needed to Let's keep going. So n new melody, right? I'm suggesting to maybe use three. Two, four, two, four, three, two, 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 three. Maybe one, right? So let's put that in. Okay. So maybe actually, let me, let me go back here. Oh, I'm sorry, why, why am I saying three? I confused, they were so close together that I confused my left hand's three with the right hand's three. So yeah, of course, we, we was thinking, why did I put a three there? So of course, use the two in the, in the left, sorry, right hand. I don't know why I always uh, confuse my hand terms. So two, four, one, four three two 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 four one and now here i'm just suggesting two one and four three two one open as obviously the next group of 16th here is taken by the left hand left hand here there uh, but before we get to it let's put it all together so beginning of the line let's see if i can blow it up just a bit more yeah, a lot of unnecessary uh, music from other lines interfering, but okay, let's just block it off. Yeah. Remove, 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 remove. And then, uh, what is this? Remove, 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 remove. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it back, I'll, I'll bring it back with undos. All right, just give, gives us a little cleaner space. Okay, so this uh, second line, really slowly. Right, so definitely a big leap right there. So just practice it. You see the uh, pink highlight. Just practice doing it, and I would say do do both do the same in the um, right hand because if you can take care of both hands shifting at the same time, then you're set. You don't need to do anything. So you're just holding these last notes with the pink highlights, and you're just saying, "I need to be here." Right. Isn't pedal wonderful? Just does the holding of the notes for you. That's what you want to practice, just that motion of the hand position. Okay, and then the last measure with all the 16th notes. Oh, I don't really need to do much except extend. You see that pattern I'm saying suggesting four three two one in the right hand and then again four three two one rather than five four three two because as you get to one it allows you to completely open up your right hand I would say that's a leap moment I would say definitely practice that so that last pink highlight you're on A and then so that way you're really making sure you're in position for these guys right here. There it is. I'm 
suggest you just slide your fifth finger down like that, yeah? So that, that's pretty much my take on this line. Let's c bring back, ooh, <laughs> having to undo a lot of things just to get back to there. Full score view. Let's do it this way. So the top line that you see, which is the third line on the page. Now here, I did not change this 5, 4, 3, 2 pattern to 4, 3, 2, 1. And the reason is because you're not taken over in the left with the left hand, that second group of 16th. So you do have to approach it differently. dramatic leaps in either hand but some you know slight position adjustments that you have to be aware of all right let's keep going so, so we arrived in C major a tempo uh, first you start with two because you already have two right next to it and then I would bring the two over but if you think that's not as optimal and you like your original four and two that you see there better then all you have to do is that leap wherever you do the leap it's up to you it's up to how you pedal i would clear the pedal for that moment where you get down to d why do i say d e so on that last moment i'll highlight it quick right at this point I would give a very nice pure E major harmony E major right and then reposition maybe right so that's using the 4-2 fingering or and then bring four over after you start the a tempo two two different options so a tempo big leap right well maybe not super big but still a leap so again just practice you practice by freezing and not making sure not to play anything but just to observe where you moved your hand in this case the left hand right, so you, once you are confident you got it now continue That's, I would call that a leap seems like it's an important moment to practice so once you clear the pedal just move Again, depending on how inside or outside on the keyboard you are it's either a bigger move or a smaller move so from here it's a relatively small move from here pretty big move yeah and then so compare both ways and I would honestly suggest that you play the left hand inside the keys leap to here so both the five and the one are touching the black keys because then the next measure will be very easy when you do have to play the black keys whereas if you get used to being here big leap right big motion inside the keyboard so something to consider uh, so last two chords of this line and then you're right there set up for the I guess line four and by the way you see I changed I suggested changing the fourth finger to the third finger because coming out from the previous line the third finger is already on F sharp so why not do that huge 
huge leap so that's definitely a practice moment ballet of the arms so we were here and then the pink highlights boom the important thing is not to control the leap the important thing is to just go for it it's okay if you miss if you go like right, okay that just means next time don't go so far okay this time what happened I didn't go far enough right so you kind of always analyzing what happened and you adjust in your head how much uh, signal to send to your muscles but you're always going for the speed okay that's pretty close the right uh, left hand is in basically in position uh, right hand went a little too far so let's try to fix that basically there now I have my what fourth finger on a sharp for some reason so you just adjust as you practice the very specific leap ah, they're much better it it can take you know a few days just to feel comfortable with it but you have to try it there it is another leap I would say with the left hand you have to oh I got the name right left hand you have to practice <coughs> excuse me uh, this uh, E leaping down to B All right so that's not not an insignificant uh, pink highlight and another huge leap up right so a lot going on with all these big chords coming in that's not a big leap but it's still a leap so I would say maybe practice both just like you did in the previous measure right. there it is something like that slight problem right you see I'm not ready to, for the key change I need to be over oh that's a huge really difficult chord I need to be here and I was stuck here so let's practice it that um, half note chord is in fact half note just because of the pedal it's not half note for the fingers and I would just keep the pedal down I would not try to be clean in the heat of the moment if I play that whole measure just before the key change down to uh, create that sense of broadening and which also means getting louder right you're really kind of engage in other orchestral instruments if you're writing for orchestra so use the pedal for that effect finally our left hand can relax a bit and just wobble uncontrollably on that tremolo I just kind of do, does this thing with fingers a little bit like uh, timpani mallets maybe <laughs> and then the, it's all about the right hand leaps right always practice leaps I would suggest you might hate the idea but I would suggest putting a three right here the reason is once you do that leap which is a leap let's face it right right on that G if you do it this way then you're set but if you go with a five you have to go leap 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 a lot of leaping so G leap to three and then Of course you can kind of see by the positioning of my nose sorry you can kind of see the microphone getting in the way of my nose but um, I really have to roll over my left hip a lot otherwise there's no chance I can play this uh, right hand right that's a huge leap across the midline of the piano but then instantly <laughs> look it's crazy at least we have a molto writ right 
two consecutive leaps up, down and up uh, a lot. Oh, and an octave, a bass octave. Did, did you see that? So I have to go leap in both ways on both hands. Wow. So let's let's practice that final leap. So I'm I'm rolled over my left hip. My nose is kind of pointing this way, right? And um, I'm here. Now where am I? So uh, third beat with that final pink leap highlight. Ah. Yeah. So that that's a huge technical moment to really get it right. I would suggest, by the way, to put three on B flats, four on C, and then it brings you into one, two, five on that final line. All right, so that's what I would do. So you're here on B3, boom. Third finger, fourth finger, and then final line. Come on. There it is. Let's see. We start with back in C major. So practice this, practice this. That's just a move you practice like, I don't know, seven times. You leap and you check. All right, one more time. One more time. Oh, well, of, of course, I'm stupid. I'm forgetting to move my position in the right hand. So it's not a leap in the right hand, but it is a move. And you need to be aware of it. Like a little leap. So, okay. Put a little... Tiny highlight there. Ah. Okay, so once you've practiced that, which will feel weird. And of course, you can see my nose is back in the middle of the keyboard. Yeah, right here. Ah. Okay, second beat with this downward uh, right hand leap. And a little adjustment on the left, right? We don't want to keep our thumb here. We want to go like this. And it's a classic big chordal moment like you hear in so many of Kevin's arrangements once you just go all over the keyboard like it's a massive orchestra and you really have to know your positioning. So then you get thankfully to a fermata. So please, please do that. Right, so you're holding this, and then you're coming out of it. I'm suggesting three, four, five. Again, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it really avoids us having to leap, leap, leap to each octave. Instead, three, four, and then five. Three, four, five. It's not that difficult. You, you should try it. In the meanwhile, we don't want to forget this leap. And that's while the fermata is going on. So you just do this. Leap, position, get ready with both hands, and then. Small leap, but let's practice it. Make sure you're getting that one, two, three right. And this is what you see I did in the left hand. I suggested alternative fingers because I think it ultimately helps to both leap a little easier and not to have to use different fingers for the same notes. So. 5, 2 on A and E, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, right, it rhymes A, B, C, B, A, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, and then just re 
re-extend back to where you were. Two, and then a leap, but not as big as it would be if you played five here. Huge leap, right? This way, a little smaller. Uh, so that, that's my suggestion for the left hand there. Leap, stop and check you landed correctly. And by the way, look what fingering I'm going with in the left hand right now. By the way, you could also do this. Yeah, you know, like one, two, one, two, one, two, that kind of fingering. So all kinds of possibilities. All right, let's let's try it again. A tempo. One more time. Leap and check. This page so let's just get out of here go to the next page there it is waiting 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 there we go almost there all right so we have the last page top line similar ideas as before we're suddenly coming down to this very intimate texture if you like no big chords just simple harmony simple melody lines and piano but if that's how I arrive at that piano measure I'm in trouble because supposed to play this note and I'm nowhere near it so we have to do the leap we have to practice from that third beat right hand right, and suddenly it's just so beautiful if you play it with that quiet, simple approach. I'm not playing super loud here just to save my ears mostly, but yeah, here you can really explode. Something like that. But um, in practice, I usually reserve my forte moments I play them more reservedly. Let's let's just say that. But that pink highlight very very important. So I practice that. Right? It's like five on C, three on G, right? So I'm making sure I'm doing it before I go on and play anything else. said before you go on again I wouldn't call it a leap as such it's just a slight position adjustment but it still has to be done like that right, so your left hand is happy similar thing in the right hand just bring it over something like that so you see my pink highlights are not as steep as when you have to do a huge leap It's more of a position readjustment as than a jumping position, a position transition. Just making sure I moved while the pedal is doing all the holding, and then oh, four five finger position, right? So if I were to high to point it out, I would do that. position adjustment here on that left hand okay. 
-hmm. sometimes it's fine to take time you don't need to play like a robot but there are certain moments where it's okay to take time and other moments where it's less okay and one of those moments is pick up uh, phrases or I should say phrases with a pickup so we have E D C whatever the words are in the original but the, it's E D C A G and another word E D C so that E D C comes together it doesn't go E D C right you don't want to separate it but if you go E D C A G take some time E D C A B and so on and so on it's okay it's musically warranted going into the next line so let's go there very slight leap here but a bigger leap here so I would just practice both hands moving at the same time oh this is this is fun <coughs> Lots of leaping through octaves in the right hand as you accelerate. Wow. So let's let's go to the key where we're going. We're going to D major. We're going to end up at Pio Mosso here. Right, that's that's where we want to be. And then oh gosh. I don't even know what to suggest here. I would maybe do a three there, maybe a five there just to make it a little easier but as long as we get to D major like this at least we have hope that we can play the rest of it so B in position in the left hand play the last note the F sharp I would use finger four I think it works right just kind of connect the octaves as best as you can okay those last three octaves into D major position should come relatively quickly but then that happens so maybe yeah, we're, we're re-entering the big chord territory basically just practice that third beat leap you have two consecutive leaps beat two and beat three in that first measure so that's the one to practice and once you can do that then you know you can play the rest and then lots and lots of leaping I'm, I'm gonna leave it up to you to practice I'll just highlight them real quick here that's a practice moment all right so oh, geez, um, wow It's not so leapy, but that is. Okay. Gosh. <coughs> Good luck. That's all I can say on this on this line. My suggestion is maybe go with four or, or a three on that F sharp instead. Just an idea. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So on that fur, on that current line, Pio Mosso, let's just go from there real slow. Small leap in the right hand. Another small leap with the right hand, with the with the left hand. you know what I, I take it back I think this th red three is not as good as your idea of a two by the way 
notice it's a half note we're just holding forever beats three four right to that next line yeah, the leak and then the left hand is just going to continue 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 boom <coughs> slight leap there that's a small leap on the right hand. That's a small kind of steps of leaps. I would suggest finger four on that sharp, C sharp. Thank you for the writ. And the majestically basically means play slower. I would suggest another four right here in the right hand. And continuing. Then the right hand comes down a bit. So, beginning of the line. Stop and check. Leap and check. And now, small leap and check. Leap and check. So I didn't quite do it right. That's it. four on that last octave G not sure what's the be better solution so that was delayed leaping right so one more time leap and just stop and check yes I'm here good <clears throat> two three four and what is the wrong with this picture you guessed it boom one more time one two three four then shift the left hand next line second to last line again that's wrong I would do that you use the pedal even if you don't use it for the first chord, if you wanted to have a rhythmic uh, sense to this um, measure, then and then pedal comes down as you do that leap. is holding shift a little bit so small position adjustment on that second beat in the measure with the eighth note rest I don't know I don't have any particular offer on the fingers other than use four here on the F sharp octave all right, let's just keep going. That was thankfully a relatively straightforward line of music. And this last line. All right, the classic cavern moment where you've got the pedal. Clear. Sorry, cannot see that. One more time clear oh there so that moment where you the bass drops out but you get a clear d major harmony in the right hand alone that's a signature cavern moment bring it out let 
fretted ring for full two beats and then the left hand melody. Now here was a real something to figure out how to finger. Octaves move in opposite directions. You really want to avoid leaps if at all possible. Use that slur marking to your advantage. So you want to end up here. Last measure. But before you get there, you have an octave D in the right hand, you have octave F sharp in the left hand. And with the right hand, I'm not sure there is a different way to finger it other than five. So you do have to sort of talk. I did videos where I discussed shared notes between two different chords or positions. So here's D put finger two there on that D. So one five, two goes on where five was. So that's how the right hand moves. In the meanwhile, if you use four for the left hand, it's kind of easy to find the DD tremolo. So that's what I would practice first, just that final shift. It's a small shift, but a shift nevertheless. So I would even maybe bring out five and show how it connects to the two. Right, see that? So I practice that move. Then backing up, you are playing four in the right hand, you're playing five in the left hand. And the idea is that you connect to these next two notes. In the right hand, four goes to five. A bit of a stretch, but doable. And then that, in the left hand you have five with four reaching across to F sharp and then going down to that D. So let's do that. Sorry. So starting on second to last octave in that penultimate measure. All right, and one more time. No, wrong, four. Now reaching. So I would just build it one by one, one by one, eventually uh, three, starting on third to last octave, fourth finger in the left hand, and finally all four eighth note octaves. So. It's a little clunky, it's not as comfortable, but I couldn't really find anything else that had that same amount of connection between fingers. So hopefully that helps. Uh, it's a big arrangement, three densely packed pages. So enjoy, I hope this video helps.